Alright guys, so here's the review of the Addy's Dive AD2117, or as I'm going to call it, the Wavy Willard, for obvious reasons. So this isn't actually the first wave style dial I've checked out from Addy's Dive, this is actually the second one, the previous one, if you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link to it up in the top if you want to check it out. But, getting back to this one. So I'll quickly take the watch out of the way for a second, briefly show you the packaging, just a passing thing though, because you've probably seen it plenty of times before, so we're not going to go into detail. And here it is. So you can see straight away, the light catching that textured dial is a really interesting look. Not something you see all that often, especially on AliExpress watches, so I do appreciate it. Just, it's something different. But before we get into detail on this, let's go over the dimensions. So we've got a diameter of 43.7, thickness of 13.4, lug width of 20, and then the all-important lug to lug is coming in at 47.2. So, they might sound like fairly big dimensions, but because we've got this cushion style case, it does wear a lot better than that would suggest. And also we've got female end links too. When it comes to the finishing on the case, you can see we've got brushed on the top and then polished on the sides. All nicely finished, no issues. And obviously that sculpted case with the integrated crown guards, recessed crown, the Addy's Dive logo on there. All nicely done. We've got a flat crystal, but it's got a slight beveled edge. Some nice polished details on the bezel. In terms of the bracelet, it's mainly brushed, again just polished on the sides, and then when it comes to the actual links, they are just push pins. When it comes to the clasp, this is actually slightly different to the one that you get with it, so I'll quickly pop this to one side and I'll show you the one you actually get with the watch. So we've got the fold over there, double pushes, unbranded, but it is just a pressed clasp. So with these kind of clasps, I always swap them out. I'll quickly show you the one I've got on the watch now. So it actually looks Pretty similar from the outside, got the fold over, double pushes again, unbranded, but this is actually a milled one. And as I say, this didn't cost a lot more. It was only, I think about five or six pounds, something like that. I'll leave a link down in the description anyway, if you want to pick one up. I definitely recommend it. So now let's get a quick zoom in on that case back, show you that. You can see we've got the Addy's Dive logo there, and then a few specs around the outside. So 200 meter water resistance, all stainless steel, and the fact that we've got an NH35. As you'd expect, it is a screw down case back as well. You can also see, now we've got this upside down, that recess for the crown. So you can grip it nice and easily underneath, because obviously with the integrated crown guards, you're not going to be able to grab it from the sides. So it is nice that they have that easy to use still. So now let's take a closer look at the dial, because that is the main thing with this watch. It's what it's all about really. And it is a really good looking one as well. So you can see that really nice texture when we're zoomed in. And the way it catches the light, different areas like slightly shaded. It has got a decent amount of depth to it. When it comes to the rest of the dial, you can see we've got that integrated date at the three o'clock. Do like the way they've done that. And it is colour matched as well with it being white. They only do this version of this watch in white, at least for now. When it comes to the indices, they're all applied. Nice silver surrounds on them, as has that date window. In terms of text, Got the Addy's Dive logo and Addy's Dive text just printed at the top. And then at the bottom, we've got automatic 200 meter. When it comes to the hands, this is a slight issue I have. I think they're a tiny bit small for the actual watch. They could have been slightly bigger. They're not awful, but just a slightly bigger hand would have been nice. And let's talk about this bezel a bit more. So it's a stainless steel bezel insert, and it is 120 click. So, quickly show you this in action now. It's got a pretty tight action. So it does take a fair amount of force. And again, it's still a little bit hot here in the UK. So my hands are a touch sweaty. Sorry about that. So, not really any back play. Tiny bit of bounce. When it comes to the alignment, that's spot on, no issues there at all, so that is good. And I did actually buy this watch, so it wasn't sent in for review. So now, let's check if that crystal is actually sapphire. Using the trusty diamond selector too. And yep, we have got sapphire crystal. So again, always good to see, especially at this kind of price point. Not always a given. So now let's talk a bit more about the movement in this. As you probably guessed, and as it did say on the back, 
it is an NH35. So I'm not going to go into detail on this. You know a lot about NH35s, how well they work. And then when it comes to the crown, it is a screw down crown, as I mentioned earlier, nicely recessed, but it is still accessible and grippy underneath and on top. So no issues with the crown or the movement, as you pretty much expect. So the question is now, what's the loom like? Is it going to be any good? Is it going to be as good as that dial or is it going to let it down? Let's find out. So you can see we've got a bit there already, but let's charge it up, give it a proper chance. And there we go. So as you can see, really impressive loom. So much so, you can actually see it reflecting off that dial, which is a pretty cool effect. Do like that a lot. And overall, it's just really good loom. So you can see we've got different looms on the hands and on the indices. So the indices are BGW9, whereas the hands are C3. And obviously that loom pip is also BGW9, so no patchiness or anything on the hands or on the indices. All really well applied. And as you can see, plenty of it too. So in terms of the longevity, I was a little bit worried that the hands were going to fade before the indices, but no, that isn't an issue. Yeah, it's not quite as bright, but they do last the same amount of time, which is the main thing. So you've not got to worry about that. So as we've come to expect with the likes of Addy's Dive, Steel Dive, they just have really good loom. Pagani could learn a thing or two. But the one thing you can notice, which I touched on earlier, is the hands. They are slightly smaller than I would have liked. If they were slightly larger, you could get a bit more loom on them. So they would stand out a little bit more. But as I say, still pretty legible and still good loom as well. So all that's left to do now is show you what it's like on wrist. Then we'll go over the pros and cons before you decide whether you want to pick one of these up or not. And here it is on my 7 inch wrist. So as I said, it does wear really nicely despite those larger dimensions with that cushion style case, female and links. That's what we've come to expect. They are deceptive with the dimensions because they do wear really well. And overall, I just think it's a really nice watch too. I'm glad they went with the stainless steel bezel over the ceramic. I think it suits the dial and the watch well. And when it comes to the clasp, I definitely recommend upgrading to the milled one over the pressed one that it comes with. Not much in terms of money, but it makes a big difference in how it wears, I think. But obviously the star of the show is still that dial. The way it just plays with the light. In terms of the bracelet, it's fairly basic, but it does the job. But you can always swap it out for straps if you prefer. Put it on like a waffle strap or something maybe. I do like the way the light catches the polished bits around the indices and the hands too. It's just a really good looking piece I think. But let me know down in the comments what do you think. I really like the way they've done the integrated date window. And obviously with it being colour matched too. That's a nice bonus. 120 click bezel. You've got the rock solid NH35 movement, so that won't be an issue. Or if it is, you can always replace them quickly and cheaply. So overall, I think it's a really good watch. But the question is, do you want something like this? Or do you want a more traditional Willard homage from the likes of Steel Dive or something? If you do, I'll leave a link to one of those at the end that I reviewed. But that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.